Hello everyone, Stephen Clark here and friends back with another news highlights from Thailand and Southeast Asia. Some tragic news for Bangkok, (laughs) they're turning off the beer for another 30 days. But that also could be extended. Get a grip on yourself! Some tragic news of a young girl committing suicide and drawing a picture of the Prime Minister Priyat Chinachat. Homeless people of Thailand told to stay home during the curfew. Only problem is they don't have one. Prime Minister Priyat Chinachat states that he shares their pain and to be patient. Good news, the Dongyang Airport is about to reopen, with limited flights of course. An English man decides to throw his wife off a balcony. Fortunately, she survives the fall. Chinese envoy to England stating that China did not cover up the Chinese coronavirus. Stay-at-home parties are being cancelled. In other words, the ban on alcohol sales won't be lifted anytime soon. Asked about the three-week-old ban on sales, the Interior Ministry Permanent Secretary said today that current measures would remain in place until at least May the 31st. Seeking any hopes of even a two-day reprieve, many had expected over the coming long weekend holiday. He said the ban would remain until further notice. Despite the Interior Minister's comments, City Hall is expected to make a formal announcement about Bangkok's plans, with the authorities in other provinces likely to do the same. The current booze ban in Bangkok, as well as over a dozen other provinces, was set to expire. It was originally enacted days before the traditional Thai New Year's festival was set to begin, which is a public time of throwing water and drinking and celebrating, and a celebration that Thais absolutely loved to participate in, known in Thailand as the Songkran Festival. Many people all over the world travel to Thailand just for this one festival. Originally, the booze ban was justified as a public health measure in response to the ongoing Chinese coronavirus pandemic raging throughout the world. Thailand has always had a strong prohibition lobby that was pushing hard and made gains in limiting the availability of alcohol in recent years under the socially conservative military-backed government. And for all you would-be travellers in Thailand stuck there, now you can't even drown your sorrow. The suicide of a young 19-year-old security guard in Bangkok has drawn public attention. The young lady who hung herself on the morning of April 28th after posting a sketch of Prime Minister Priyat Chinachat with a message complaining about being rejected for the 5,000 baht handout and was rumoured she was suffering serious financial hardships. She wrote, it's a drawing that I had no desire to continue drawing. I felt that this picture could be drawn on any paper. Since I studied, I have never seen any drawing that were low like this. I drew it in a fit of depression, having no money to buy milk for my child. Everything is sold at skyrocket prices. I drew it in a fit of desperation that I work 12 hours a day and yet I have nothing left. I drew it with tears. She blamed Priyat Chinachat for the tough life and trouble she and other poor people have faced during his administration. She had applied for a handout on April the 16th. Her payment was slightly delayed because she had not supplied her security information. The young girl had high blood pressure and could not work at the time. Police attribute the young security guard's suicide to poor health and personal problems. Her work colleagues told police that she talked often about many issues, but she never talked about politics or the government's 5,000 baht cash handout for people affected by the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. She was a talented artist and liked drawing pictures of people in cartoons. There has been reports of many people in Thailand giving up on life and committing suicide, but there can be help available for you. And don't forget one important thing, Life will get better. Give it a chance. Unfortunately, in Thailand, and many countries around the world, there are the homeless. You know some of these people are homeless and you feel very sorry for them. Unfortunately, sometimes you come across homeless people, they are not homeless, they are doing it for a business. 
When they are finished begging on the streets, they jump into their four-wheel drives and drive home. This is why foreigners always think twice before giving a donation. And well, to make sure they're not wearing a Rolex underneath that dirty shirt. Now, Thailand is not the only country with this problem. It's all over the world. But today, this news report will concentrate on the real homeless people of Thailand and not the scammers. I lived in Thailand for nine years and was very, very hard to walk past people without giving a donation, and especially to the elderly, who would usually have no home and no one to support them. I will always give to these misfortunate people if I come across them. Unfortunately, there are many scammers in Thailand as there is all over the world. The scammers have made their way into the street begging and made it a business. But really, who cares? I just give them the money, no matter how much percentage the scammers take off them, to be begging on their turf. So what would you call them? Begging pimps. Anyway, to the story. Homeless people of Thailand told to stay home. So how can people in Thailand stay home if they are homeless? Thai Major General Pratyot Chinacha has repeatedly said, no one is left behind. He should insist government officials follow his motto and apply it to the homeless people without a place to live. Police arrested Chu. Now he's a homeless man in the city of Chiang Mai on April the 5th for violating the 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. curfew the Thai government imposed as an emergency measure to contain the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. After the police found Chu wandering the streets without permission or a necessary reason, the Chiang Mai court sentenced Chu to 15 days in jail, which was suspended and a fine of 1,500 baht or 46 US dollars. The judge decided not to put Chu in a three-day detention in lieu of paying the fine, which he could not afford. The judge then ordered Chu, who usually sleeps on the floor of a local wet market, not to repeat the offence and not to leave home for seven days. Chu said he did not see how he could accomplish that. I will just have to hide, hoping police don't see me in the streets at night again. Thailand has thousands of homeless. There have been similar cases across Thailand, raising concern that the Chinese coronavirus outbreak regulations are especially hard on people without homes. Government statistics suggest Thailand has approximately 2,700 homeless people, typically undercounted in a nation of around 69 million. The lockdown and empty streets mean fewer opportunities for the homeless people to earn money. In addition, they face stigmatization and accusations of negligently spreading the Chinese coronavirus as well as disobeying government orders. Though it has been over 15 weeks since Thailand recorded its first Chinese coronavirus case, the Thai government has not effectively reached out to the homeless population for testing. Only rudimentary temperature checks using handheld thermometers are available to the homeless people when they line up to receive food and other necessities. Government-run shelters are often overcrowded without sufficient space required for physical distancing and are far from areas homeless people know and frequent, so they're reluctant to go. Housing has become the frontline defence against the Chinese coronavirus outbreak, but how can people in Thailand stay at home if they are homeless? No one is left behind, only the homeless. Major General Pratyot Chinacha should really get his ministers to practice what he preaches. Thai Prime Minister Pratyut Chinacha. Following the extensions of emergency degree for another month, Thai Prime Minister Pratyut Chinacha is calling on everyone to bear with him as efforts to flatten the Chinese coronavirus outbreak curve continues. Reports that the degree being extended until May the 31st, the PM is now asking for the understanding and cooperation, promising that the government will provide financial assistance to those who have fallen on hard times. I realise that everyone, including low income owners, farmers and those with independent careers are experiencing hard times. The government will take good care of you with the existing budgets and an executive degree on borrowing details, which details will come out later. I would like business operators to be patient a little bit longer. I also share your pain, the Prime Minister said. 
The PM continues to be concerned about a possible second wave of infections, with the Cabinet deciding yesterday to extend the emergency degree in place across the country, while allowing provincial governments to decide next step in the local restrictions. The national curfew remains in place between 10pm and 4am, and also the ban on mass gatherings. There continues to be several limits on inbound and outbound travel, and the only exception being repatriation flights in either direction. Cabinet is asking Foreign Affairs Ministry to get a clear idea how many Thai citizens are overseas and wish to return home, so that their subsequent arrival and quarantine can be planned. To avoid government's quarantine facilities being overwhelmed, only 200 Thais a day are being admitted back into the country. They must then undergo a mandatory 14-day quarantine period. The Cabinet yesterday agreed that an easing of restrictions would be based on public health first and foremost, and on a condition that rules to prevent the spread of the infection are strictly adhered to. It's understood the situation will be carefully monitored and should there be any signs of an increase in Chinese coronavirus cases, restrictions will once more be put back into force. Bangkok, the manager of the Dongliang Airport, prepares for more flights as two airlines will resume their services on May the 1st. Dongliang Airport director said that Thai Air Asia and Thai Lion Air would resume domestic services at the Dong Myung Airport on May the 1st, in addition to Nok Air that has been operating about 20 domestic flight services at about 1,000 people a day. Some airlines suspended services due to the Chinese coronavirus outbreak. The management of the Dong Myung Airport said that Thai Air Asia will operate 18 flights a day, Thai Lion Air 4 flights a day. On May the 1st, Nok Air will increase its daily flight to 24. Consequently, Don Myung Airport will service about 3,000 to 4,000 passengers a day. Also on May the 1st, Don Myung Airport will have more thermal cameras at its gates, 10 or 14 to detect people with fevers. Meanwhile, the Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand requires everyone to wear face masks and conduct social distancing in passenger terminals to prevent the disease from being transmitted to others. The management of Dom Young Airport said flights would start at 7am and the last incoming flight would land within 6pm daily. Therefore, visitors would not have a problem with the 10pm the 4 a.m. curfew. Taxi drivers and vendors at the airport were informed of the service's resumption, they said. Everyone wishes them all the success in this. A woman seriously injured after English husband allegedly throws her from the balcony. A woman has been seriously injured in Rayong, east of Thailand, after her English husband allegedly threw her from a balcony of the 8th floor condo yesterday afternoon. Thai residents reported a 56-year-old woman named only as Sakoda landed on the patio on the 7th floor of the building in the Banchang district. Officers from the local police station arrived to find her covered in blood and screaming in pain. As she described to them, her husband, named only as Dave, had thrown her from the balcony from the floor above. Officers from Rayong Immigration Police were also in attendance, accompanied by officials from the Crime Suppression Division and members of the local foundation rescue team who rushed the victim to Ban Chung Hospital. Investigating officers were told that the woman's husband, aged 46, had been seen kneeling on his balcony, his palms pressed together in prayer following the incident. Police eventually managed to contact a friend of his who arrived at the scene. After more than two hours of negotiation, officials were able to gain entry into the property when David opened the door. He told officers that being unable to return to the UK as a result of the Chinese coronavirus lockdown had put a strain on his marriage and claimed his wife had fallen from the balcony during an argument. The the police are planning to interview Sakoda, the woman, once she has recovered sufficiently. She has been left with serious injuries, including hip fractures and a broken arm, as a result of the incident. China did not cover up the coronavirus and warns the US. The ambassador for China in London urged the US, which it has accused China of hiding information to stop acting as the world policeman. China did not cover up the Chinese coronavirus outbreak, and so the United States should not seek to bully the Chinese Communist Party. 
in a manner reminiscent of the 19th century European colonial wars. The Chinese Communist Party ambassador to London said on Thursday, I hear quite a lot of this speculation, disinformation about China covering up about Chinese hiding something. This is not true, the ambassador said. The Chinese Communist Party was transparent and very quick to share data. He added, some other countries, the local courts sued China. It is absurd. Some people want to play at being the world policeman. This is not the era of gunboat diplomacy. This is not the era when China was a semi-colonial and semi-feudal society. These people still live in the old days. They think they can bully China, thinking they can bully the world. China is not an enemy of the United States. If they regard China as an enemy, they chose the wrong target, the Chinese Communist Party ambassador said. Even so, the US President Donald Trump has continued to refer to the COVID-19 disease as the Chinese virus. The Chinese Communist Party and the World Health Organization have stated that all available evidence suggesting that the novel coronavirus originated in animals in China late last year was not manipulated or produced in a laboratory. They also stated it was probably likely that the virus is of animal origin.